Okay, good afternoon everybody. I'm Chris, that is Sarah. We are both from history and we want to talk to you today about a little segment of a module which we teach called Making History, whereby we take students outside the classroom for at least part of it. Just to give you a bit of background about what the module is all about, we get students into groups of two or three and we ask them to undertake a piece of research of their choice on anything they want to do with the history of Sheffield. We set some Boundaries 1743 to 1918, I'll explain that later if anyone's interested. Um, but this is really an inquiry based approach to learning history. These are students that are in their first year at university. The module previously was in the second semester and since moved to the first semester. This is one of the first modules that students are doing. Um, they have to use primary source material as part of their research. So this is historical manuscripts, diaries, letters, maps, and so forth. Um, they have two outputs from their piece of research. They have to produce an unassessed poster, which goes into a public exhibition, which is marked, and then they also produce a research essay, which is the academic writer of their research. And we also have five outside visits outside of the university as part of the delivery of the module. One of them is compulsory, the other four are mapped down up to the students if they want to come along. So I will now present you a map of Sheffield and Sarah and talk you through what we do with the students. Okay, so history at um, Hallam is based at the city campus. Um, and part of it, as Chris says, is taking them outside the classroom to engage them and embed that content in the module. So the first thing we do, uh, all the students in the second um, week go across the road, literally. They can see it. Most of them from their, their classroom can see the library. They don't know what it is the library. They've never been into the library, most of them. Um, they know it's opposite of pub. And that they can start doing their research there within the environment. We take them all within one day. So all students go through the library. Um, we are there to give them advice, but of course the, the staff at the local studies library are there to give them advice to engaging with them. Not only are they able to sort of find out more about a potential research project, they're able to refine projects, find out much more. Primarily they're using secondary sources and some printed primary sources. So the next visit uh, that we take them on, which has to be more optional because of course um, the space is much more concentrated in the archives than the library. Um, and they'll only let you have so many people there at any one time. Needless to say, of course, um, it's a very popular oversubscribed visit, um, but then independently, students are going there. When Chris was there in the archives, 22 um, students went on one occasion, he saw them there doing research. Their assignment was due, wasn't it? <laughs> we, have 100, we have 100 students on the module. To see 22 in the archives in a single day is quite surprising, but it's two days before an assessment in which they have to say, we have looked at this primary source. <laughs> so there are pitfalls to this. Now, whilst those two visits are very much about getting resources to undertake that research project, which are vital um, for them being able to fulfil that part of the, the um, assessment, we also take them on a history walk. Where we take them around Sheffield, um, pointing out interesting buildings, monuments, um, various things that they might find relevant to the project. Um, they might find a bit more about how history is presented to the public as well, uh, which is part of them presenting their research as a poster. But quite importantly, they're finding out more about Sheffield as well. They're in the first year, they're finding out about Sheffield, what's on the doorstep, and it's making them more engaged with what they're studying at the same time. We then take them to two museums, again optional visits. And one of the things that came out of the museum visits was developing a sense of course identity and developing and building social relations. Um, Western Park's more a general museum, so they're getting a, a sense of the history of Sheffield. We also take them to the Industrial Museum. Oh. Got a photo of this That's one. our students at Western Park. And as you can see, they're enjoying themselves. We've got people uh, mixing from different workshop and seminar groups who wouldn't normally know each other or talk to each other, starting um, to talk to each other, develop ideas across the whole module. Yeah, and the second visit is to a more specialist museum, um, on the subject of industrial heritage and history in Sheffield. But again, it's that sense of as well as finding out about the project and how history is presented to people, it's how do you fit into this module, how you part of that course community, and um, how does that make you more engaged as part of the process as a student. 
Yeah, we did the visits on Wednesday afternoons, so typically outside of teaching time. Um, out of 100, we tend to, to have 15 to 20 sign up, 12 to 15 show up. Um, and I think sometimes the students are enjoying interacting with their lecturers outside of those classrooms, outside of these sort of professional environments in some ways. After we finished at Kelm Island, I took all of them to the Fat Cat. Okay, they didn't, uh, I didn't pay for them all to have a drink, but they enjoyed just being able to sit in an environment that's not academic and just talk about the problems and issues they're having, being students in their first year. Um, a few quick evaluation points and then how we over time? Just got about a minute and a bit. So, before the module began, we, we surveyed the students at the start of the module. We found uh, three quarters of them had never used an archive before at the start of the module. By the end of the module, only 11% of them used archives. They're a wealth of primary sources online. You need to look things like Ancestry to know the students don't have to go to physical resources. But the fact that just about 10 to 12 students haven't used their archives means that they are more prepared for the rest of their course in doing history. At the start of the module, again, 8% have only used libraries outside of Halle before the course. At the end, that's up to 86%. And their confidence in using primary sources is going up as well, which is a key part of learning how to do history and write history. So we're finding that taking the students outside the classroom is giving them sort of more of a, an alive experience of doing history and it's feeding into their student experience as well. Do we have time for questions? Brilliant. Yeah, 30 seconds. Quick Any question. questions? Stunned into silence. <laughs> have you seen any improvement in the results of their assessments? Have you done any comparative work? I don't know. <laughs> I just wondered if there was a measure that you could... There's a quality of the work improvement. <laughs> We, we tend to find that the students that come along to things like this are the, the top of the course anyway. So I guess one of our challenges is how do we attract students who are less able, less engaged into things like this to show them the value of it. Um, one of the main stumbling blocks on the question is that it's outside of timetable yeah. hours. They may have jobs and they have other things to do. One question if we have time. Really good right, right at the beginning, you just made reference to, I think, 1740. 43 Yes. Yeah. Is that the connection? Yes. Yeah. That's the connection, yes. Try some, man. I'm back. I don't have a problem. I'll move. <laughs> 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 <